To gain victory in no matter what situation that happens as we are believers, we must not bow to the way of this world. Hallelujah. We must, in fact, be willing to die. I'm going to let that sit for a minute. Instead of dishonoring our relationship with Christ. You see, in the world that we live today, there's like a new normal to every part and aspect of life. Now you have Satanism is on the rise. People are worshiping the devil like openly. Like they have no kind of, you know, filter. It used to be when we were growing up, like people were scared of the devil. Like my mom used to be in the house, like in the name of Jesus, I bind them. I'm like, oh Lord Jesus, like what didn't happen now? Like people, like I was scared of the devil, like seriously. But because of the way time has been now, and the world that we live in, people have come like desensitized to the devil. Like they, it's in the music, it's in social media. I went on Instagram the other day and I went on Facebook and I said, Lord, you know, I gotta, I gotta come off of this. Like, like the devil's not hiding. Like people are going to concerts and there's portals being opened in these concerts and they're going, just singing the music, going along, not understanding the symbolism. They're not understanding what the devil and the enemy is putting before them. Hallelujah. Even in branding in some of the stores that we go to, like some of the places that we eat, like, come on now, you, how you mess with chicken? <laughs> how you mess with chicken? But this is the new norm. Like nobody is like scared anymore. Like people outside, like, you know, and it's, it's getting to a point where like even like racism, racism is on the rise. Like, injustices, gun violence, like, it's so many things that are, like, on the rise that it's letting you know that the time that we knew is no longer here. Amen? To the point that they even, they have lobbyists, which are people who are paid to push a certain agenda. So, like, even now, like they said, we're in Pride Month. Hallelujah. And, you know... <laughs> I mean, when I say everywhere I've gone in the last two weeks, even at my job today, I looked on the computer, they have rainbow flags, it's Pride Month. I mean, I love Bath and Body Works. Even Bath and Body Works got some type of rainbow, you know. And, you know, even with my background, because before, you know, the Lord actually delivered me from lesbianism. And... I was in that lifestyle for about 10 years, and even when I was in there, I, I was that person, like, I was like, you know, I'm proud, I'm not going to hide, you know, when it came to my mother, when it came to my family, when it came to my friends, like, I went hard for what I believed in. So, I say that to say that they're pushing this agenda on our children and the young people. And what it's causing is our young people are having what they call an identity crisis. So it's as if being a woman and a man, that's, that's like a thing of the past now. Like, even when I was working at the hospital a couple of months ago at the other previous hospital I worked at, I remember coming in contact with one of the patients that was coming up to the window. And she, or what I called her, she was with her husband at the time. And when I looked at her from all accounts, they looked normal, you know, you don't really know because it was an emergency room. So I see all type of people. And so I began to run her information through the system and I'm, you know, you have to ask a couple questions, excuse me, like what's your name, your address, all that kind of stuff. So I said, well, ma'am, and her husband stopped me. He said, excuse me. So I'm like, sir, <laughs> uh, what, what, what I did wrong? <laughs> but he said, she's not ma'am. She's us. She's them. So I looked at my coworker and I'm like, where is us and them at? I don't see that. <laughs> hey Amen. I see her, she. I see your wife. I see you. 
I'm us, I don't see them, you know? But that's just how deep this thing goes. People think when they see gay people, it's like, oh, they just gay, they just... No, this is deep, like, literally, like, I was so bound in this lifestyle that I didn't even, like, when you would see me, you would see me, but, like, this is not the person that you see. Like, I, I never dress like this. I never talk like this. Like, my mama called it, I was ghetto. You know how that is. Like, hey, you know, that was the way I was. Like, everything about me changed. My language, like, you know, I was calling women him and, and sir and, and, and all those kind of things. Like, even to the point, like, I even had my children around this. So it's like, you have your children, and you teaching them on one side, because I used to, you know, try to backdoor, you know how you had them little times, like first lady said, like, when you're in sin, <laughs> you have those moments where you want to kind of preach, and you preach to people that, you know, because you're convicted inside, because, you know, I grew up in church, so I'm like, you know, this is not, this is not it. Like, mommy's just, you know, hey, like, just, but because the enemy had had me so confused of who I truly was, I wasn't unable to operate how you see me today. So that's the danger of an identity crisis. Because you know how we are. Like, we, you know, I was the type of person, like, I'm riding a dime for my people. Like, what's up? But at some point in your relationship with Christ, you have to make a conscious decision. And the thing is, is that our decision can't be contingent on the things that the world is doing or not doing around us. Our main focus has to be the will of God for our lives. So, in this story with the three Hebrew boys, what it shows is God's faithfulness when we are obedient to his word and we stand for righteousness. To Nebuchadnezzar's surprise that when he threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire, he didn't realize that Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah's relationship with God would save them and not even the guards that threw them in the fire. Much like us, the children of God, we must understand that no matter the situation, no matter the circumstances, no matter the things that we're going through, no matter the stuff you see on social media, that we must, even if it costs us our very life, be willing to stand firm on the word of God and the things of God. 